Yeah, I'm Thomas Bayen. I'm in the community for more than 10 years and um, I uh, started uh, being in the community as a user because I have a beverage selling company and uh, then I was involved in the project and I um, later I did a company together with Carlos to uh, improve item Pierre and to <laughs> share things for the community. That is the mm. service. Um, we do implementations and consulting and small things and also a main reason is we still support my beverage business. So uh, what I want to show today is a small plugin that we did um, but it really helps and it shows how easy it can be to solve small problems in IDMPA in a very <coughs> sophisticated way. Yeah, it's uh, about the document status validator plugin. Um, you know that there is a, there are validators in all kinds of records. And uh, we had the problem in our business uh, that uh, we did business faster than we could enter all data in and prepare all data. So we delivered things before we did the price lists and we calculated everything. And the problem was that the sales team was very fast in selling things and delivering things and then they wrote invoices and all data was wrong and the customer was angry because uh, things the invoice was not ready and the salesman said, oh no, you should not write this invoice. Why did you start that? And the simple solution was to write a validator that checks things and just uh, forbids to create uh, an invoice. So we thought about it with uh, Diego. Diego wrote the plugin and the idea was that um, uh, doing a document action might be forbidden in some cases. And the most uh, sophisticated way to do that was to uh, have um, SQL to check everything. And after we used that for this one reason, we found a lot of other things we could check before doing invoices. So for example, we can check if the customer paid his bills before doing a delivery or things like that. Um, I can show you how it works. Uh, so uh, this is a wiki page about it. So it's <coughs> everything we do is open at DX. Um, yeah, that's an, an example configuration from the wiki page. And you see that's quite easy if you have a grand total for example, and you, everyone here, I think everyone can read the SQL. And uh, I will show you how that works in, in real world, for example. We do an order here. And as you see, this customer, uh, we have a business partner, but a different invoice partner. And in this case, that means this customer is from a franchise chain, and we have to send the invoice to someone else. And important in the contract <coughs> with this company is that they need an order reference. But you see, there is no order reference here. And now I enter a product. Okay. What's happening? Okay. <laughs> so now we can deliver that. My system allows to deliver it and print shipment documents. But when we try no. Ah. I have to print it. Okay, when I printed it and I want to complete it, it's just not allowed. 
because the auto reference is missing. Uh, the user gets a um, clear message. So the message explains what he did wrong and he has to ask the customer for the auto reference. That's a quite easy and clean thing. Um, this is <coughs> one of the first things we did because that made a lot of mess. Uh, I have one more sophisticated example what we do that is um, no let's use another business partner that's me So let's say this business partner is new or I had a sales uh, talk with him and I'm thinking about new conditions, new prices, whatever. So I can go to this business partner and say, it is locked. And at this moment, all documents are locked from this business partner and when I try this document here for example I can still save ah it's not safe thanks <laughs> no <Nope. coughs> So when it's printed, normally we can follow our process to uh, write an invoice, but in this moment we have the very same. It does not work. And um, we can lock single documents, we can lock customers, and we have rules which roles can lock and which roles can unlock. So that's a kind of an approval system we implemented with very simple mm. uh, rules about um, the right, right to this lock field. And um, that works very well for us. And it's very easy to implement that without knowing Java or anything. Uh, yeah. I can show you how the validation works. For example, so everyone who knows SQL sees that this is quite easy to implement and it's a very easy thing for people that don't want to write a plugin for everything and the normal validation needs to write Java code and is quite complicated and has a higher um, a higher step to, to do it and here uh, it was first we did um, locking of uh, documents and adding the locking of uh, um, of customers was quite easy, as you see uh, here. Yeah, my idea is uh, that we can possibly extend that because the idea is to see if a record is okay or not, or has a, has a status, a good status or a bad status. And I think we can ask this question for a very lot of things like has this customer the right prices or has it uh, the address or whatever to check everything and to make more measurements out of that but uh, we did not implement that up to now an idea is to have a list of all wrong things in the system yeah that are the ideas what we can check more and I'm working on that. I have a lot of uh, SQL code already in that I start myself, but I want to integrate that in IDMPL to get a list for the data maintainers in our company uh, to, to yeah, so they can do it on their own. Up to now I start these SQLs and from time to time and I neck them 
to repair things, but I hope uh, that uh, like the business performance problems and the data integrity is a lot of problems that normal users can repair. This orders with projects, can you give an example? Orders with projects, how do you use it in this case? Yeah, we, uh, yeah, we have some employees that has, have the habit to enter orders for yesterday or for today, but we deliver tomorrow. And our process is uh, that they can get lost. Yeah, today we deliver everything that is on date <coughs> from today, but when the date is from yesterday, we forget it. So, so someone has to check all, uh, all documents every day, but when we don't do that, we lose an order. Customer yeah, that's more like then that we get a dashboard that shows us all problems. And the dash when you open item here in the morning, you see like there are there is one order from yesterday. They were closed. Yeah. yeah. So all orders must be in the future. We cannot deliver in the past without uh, a time. Yeah. So you think it's not about forbidding the document. It's more about having a list of it or a dashboard or a task list for someone to care about these things. Practically not only for this implementation, not it's only for protocol and status, but for labels. That are ideas and extensions. Yeah. When you one idea is just stop the document flow. But after thinking about <coughs> it, I know that we have a lot of things you can see through a SQL query that are wrong in the system that do not belong to the document status when they come But that's the next idea to to have a list of wrong data, yeah. and you can use that in your dashboard. And when the first customer opens in the morning the dashboard, and there is like five wrong customer entries or five wrong whatever, then someone has to pair. This is the raw center. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's. Uh, what we are doing. If you have questions about that, just ask me. Or Diego did the implementation. I'm optimizing that would be would very much simplify the quite complex approval process that we had for getting invoices approved and then completed. Yeah. We end up doing using really ugly things using display logic, so that we would simply. You couldn't see the, uh, the document action button if certain conditions hadn't been met. But nobody ever knew why it wasn't displayed. Uh, so it would be nice to get proof of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I thought about the internal improvement, but that works very well for us. Mm. And it's quite easy. Yeah, when you want to see the whole improvement thing, it's like three or four fields, and uh, it's not and not it's magic. magic. And then let you avoid the work Yeah. Yeah. I've seen I've seen one one condition and one uh, uh, evaluation, but uh, often if you have, have an order or something like that, there uh, may be twenty or thirty uh, conditions that must be met. Um, I didn't see some kind of, of list or hierarchy where how you how you uh, put it all together. And uh, the the validators have a sequence field and here in this example we have four five validators and they are checked uh, you have the table so they are all about orders and you can sort them by I don't know yeah <laughs> they all have ten in my example but you can order them and that works 
Okay. Mm -hmm. And in this, the sequence is uh, connected to the step. Yeah, when you do more than one fold, you you can decide which one pops up first. <coughs> we, 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 we did it at first that if, if the first one failed, you get the first one. Mm -hmm. But then we noticed that then he got, like, he fixed that <coughs> one and he came back and another one failed. So now you get all everything that fails ah. in just one message. That's mm -hmm. how it works. Yeah. And what may be interesting is, uh, I think it's clear that uh, you can use a validator after mm -hmm. and before every <coughs> change of uh, document status. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm fine. Not a question, but a comment. Yeah? You are always finding ways to do things without calling us. <laughs> <laughs>